Hello there, welcome to Network. My name is Spumelele Zondi. Last week, we saw Samsung announce the launch date of a few cool products. Amazing looking things revealed there. Nokia told us as well that um, South Africa launched date of their new signature product, the Lumia 1020. That's apart from other big news they shared with us. Some say it was inevitable. It's a story we'll get on in a bit. So with that, here's your technology news. Let's start in South Africa's capital city, Pretoria. A judge has ordered a couple to pay damages of 40,000 rand over defamatory Facebook comments. A woman made the comments about her ex-husband's ex-wife, but her husband will also have to pay because he was tagged. None of the three parties involved can be named as comments involved children the man has with his ex-wife. It's a complicated case that sets precedent for future cases. Acting Judge Jan Hiermster said the man has to pay too because having allowed his name to be tagged in the comments, he therefore knew about them. We'll make an effort to get a legal expert to look into that one into, in the future for us. Now, Zambians are mourning the death of Information Minister Kennedy Sakeni. He was spearheading the country's digital migration process. It's a process that has already caused much conflict in the country. Minister Kennedy Sakeni's policies for digital migration were continually rejected by private radio and television stations in the months leading up to his death. Digital broadcasting allows for better television picture and sound quality. It also increases the amount and variety of television and radio content for the general public. With or without Mr. Sakeni's leadership, digital migration in Zambia is poised to continue. After all, the process is mandated by SADC and the African Union. Everyone in Africa has to migrate to digital broadcasting and beat the 2015 deadline. Just like in South Africa, getting the trick right is seemingly challenging for Zambia. As early as four months ago, confusion still reigned over which software companies had been awarded the contracts to roll out the migration infrastructure. Tzile Haswani Network. The Tanzanian government says it needs 152 million US dollars for new communication towers in the rural areas. The country's Ministry of Communication, Science and Technology says the towers will be for 200 villages in the country. There is funding that comes from the World Bank for this purpose, but the government is unhappy with the flow of this money from to the Universal Communication Services Access Fund tasked with raising the cash. Power is back in parts of Johannesburg that didn't have it. South Africa's biggest city, which is also the continent's wealthiest, depends on electricity to function properly. Without power, mobile phones can't charge, computers don't work, and the economy slows down. It's suspected striking electricity workers had switched it off. A city in darkness, with some depending on generators for power. And this provides a sound South Africans aren't quite used to. This bank had to shut down all operations and money couldn't move. And businesses had to stop in shops such as this one. Johannesburg's electricity workers have been on strike, saying they don't want the new shift system. An employer, City Power, suspects them of switching off the electricity grid. The possible sabotage. We, we do not have uh, security surveillance at all our substations. However, we've deployed uh, security guards to our substations, which uh, hopefully will prevent any further unauthorized switching. And workers say it's not them. It's okay, sure. okay, so okay, sure. okay. We didn't switch off the electricity. The electricity will switch off if we are not at work. All we are saying is that we don't want shifts. City Power says if the culprits are found, then they'll face criminal charges. Airtel now has the most expensive mobile phone call charges in Kenya. The company has increased its charges. Regulator Communications Commission of Kenya has slashed tariffs about 20% in July this year. This was after tariff wars between network providers in the country. CCK also wants to cut mobile termination rates in the country. There are providers in Kenya who are opposed to the new proposed price reductions. Google has been taken to court over privacy of Gmail accounts in America. Last week, I met up with Google's vice president, Vincent Cerf. I wanted to know if these cases are in America, then whose internet security rules do Africans play by? 
This is the transparency report Google has released online. Here it shows Morocco once interrupted the Google Earth mapping product. Egypt and Djibouti were among the countries that inquired about the YouTube videos containing clips from the movie Innocence of Muslims. Google then made restrictions in Egypt and Libya. But despite this, Google's Vice President Vincent Cerf says he believes in Internet freedom. There is a question about surveillance which shows up, and people worry about that, and they should. Uh, that can be stymied to some degree by using these various cryptographic methods. But I think some rules and regulations need to be in place to say what's allowed and what is not allowed uh, in terms of, uh, of surveillance on the network. In America, there have been many cases involving how Facebook, Google and other websites do things. Google has been taken to a federal court in America for mining information to streamline advertising to relevant users. If these court cases are won in America, then it means Africans are essentially using the world's largest search engine according to American rules. The American law determines what happens. Uh, even when there are requests from other countries for information, we still go through a process called MLAT, which requires international negotiation before we respond. But Surf believes this does not hinder your Google search experience. Nokia was once the undisputed leader of mobile phones, but lagged far behind in the de development of smartphones. Therefore, there was some cynicism that greeted the announcement of the merger with Microsoft. Some say the world just witnessed some of the best computer technologies coming under one roof. But is there a possibility that Microsoft just bought a headache worth over 70 billion rand when they bought Nokia? For years, Nokia has been in decline as it struggles to compete in the smartphone market. This, of course, alongside dominant giants such as Apple and Samsung. But despite the cynicism, some industry insiders say Microsoft and Nokia just may have created a formidable technology ecosystem. If they can um, tie the two bu the business closer together, they can also design devices faster, like hit devices, and they can make the software work a bit easier, with, work better with the um, hardware. By gaining access to Microsoft's Windows Phone software, Nokia has a strong advantage against struggling BlackBerry. This will help it in the battle for third place in the smartphone market. For Microsoft, the merger simply means it gets to transform itself into a device and services provider. For Microsoft, it's also a signature event, a signature event in our transformation. A lot of companies are launching new gadgets. Maybe it's because they want us to budget correctly for gifts for the holiday season. Samsung had a massive launch of their upcoming products in Germany. We'll tell you about our favorite one out of that list later on. But new products from other brands are expected in the market as well. On Tuesday, Apple will reveal a number of new iPhones. This will include a long-rumored lower-cost iPhone that could be ideal for people who've always wanted to own one but just couldn't afford it. It's probably one that will be popular here in Africa. As for conquering its two largest markets, China and the U.S., Apple will focus on bold colors and better functioning for its phones. I think um, maybe the focus should be a little more on the absolutely essential, useful features. You think about what Apple did with the MacBook Air, really bumping up the battery life. I think if the battery life could be maxed out on the next iPhone, that would be a great move. Uh, it doesn't sound like the sexiest thing, but I think uh, I, know, I know a lot of people would like that. There's also speculation a new iPad will keep sending other tablets to the graveyard. And the battle for tech dollars goes beyond phones. Microsoft just announced its Xbox One will be ready before December in 13 countries. Unfortunately, none of these are in Africa. This will follow Sony's PlayStation 4 debut a week earlier. The African continent doesn't have to wait for too long for those. Now there's a teenager in Australia who seems to be spot on with releasing images of Apple products beforehand. He has done this yet again on his website. The high school graduate thanks his sources in China for providing him with these images. If you have been following the leaks surrounding the iPhone 5S and iPhone 5C and can't seem to get enough, well, you owe Australian teenager Sonny Dixon a big thank you. Following his repertoire of leaked next-generation iPhone hardware, the high school graduate from Melbourne, Australia has struck yet again. He has leaked the iPhone 5S home button hardware on his website, sunnydixon.com.
The teenager says he has about 10 sources in China who buy Apple prototype parts directly from factory line workers. His sources then post the parts on his website and his other social network pages. That enables him to share the pictures with his many online followers. Dixon is oblivious to the possibility that he might be breaking the law. And our discussion is on digital downloads of African films and music. You can be a part of that discussion on SABC Network on Twitter. Let's go to a break now. Stay with us. You're watching SABC News. I'm Lorette Morgan and you can join me every weekday between 10 and 12.30 for AM News. I'm excited uh, for the first time. I'm not only going to wait for 7 o'clock news <laughs> or 6 o'clock news. For all the latest breaking local and international news, come and unpack the news day with me every weekday at 10. Welcome to Rights and Recourse, a program that informs and educates viewers about their legal rights and what recourse to take. I'm your host, Dumile Mateza. We are forced to utilize every possible channel to question the Correctional Services Safety measures. We will exhaust all avenues to ensure justice is served and until, as a family, we are satisfied and all our questions have been answered. Welcome back to Network. Remember, we are on SABC Network on Twitter. Share your views and participate in our conversation there. The internet is not just a tool that offers a lot of information we want. It even offers the convenience of downloading music and movies without leaving home. Africa is catching up fast with sites that make new content available at a click. iTunes changed the way many consume music. The application was developed by Apple under the guidance of Steve Jobs. Initially, it was just for Mac products. Then came along the iPad. iTunes became a legal way of downloading music and helped reduce piracy. The music industry was tired of people pirating music, saving it on their computers and sharing it for free with friends. After iTunes, then others realized music could be sold online and a trend started. These days, people listen to music on their mobile phones, tablets and other gadgets as well. The film industry was also suffering the same fate. Despite Nollywood being the biggest in Africa, many would copy films and sell them on the streets. Nollywood is currently the third largest industry in the world. That is awesome. Did you also know that the incessant activities of pirates is crippling the industry? Websites like IrokoTV.com make it easy for people to access Nigerian content online. I am the one who called off my wedding, went to walk down the aisle. Yes, I'm the one. I'm the one. Yes, you are the one. Some films are free on the website, but some come at a fee. The website is even endorsed by some Nigerian actors. Now joining us in the studio to talk about digital downloads of music and films in Africa is Adinduka Agu, who is in charge of Iroko Partners Business Development for Africa. In Durban, we have TK Ongubane, who is a music producer and founder of mzanzimusic.co.za. Hello and welcome to both of you. Now, starting with you, Adi, um, do you think there's enough information to Africans about what piracy actually is? Uh, I reckon the information is out there. It is a question of, one, whether people uh, have access to it, and also, of course, whether they care. A lot of people that we speak to, including in the more educated sectors, just don't feel like they should have to pay for things on the, or that are on the Internet because they're already paying for the Internet. So it's not just a question of whether they know, but also whether it's something they want to heed. Mm. And to KO in Durban, do you agree with that? Do, are people aware and it's a matter of whether they care? Yes, uh, people are aware, but uh, the issue also it's a matter of uh, demand and supply and convenience of, of acquiring uh, music. 
Okay, but what do you mean it's a matter of demand and supply and a matter of acquiring music? Because if it's on the net, then there's supply there. The supply is there, but also the convenience and uh, the habits, the trends of how people, want, or how people prefer to enjoy their music. All right, and Adi, um, he mentions that um, it's how people prefer to enjoy their music. So if, if people would choose to get it for free, then why do we have websites like Iroko? So actually one thing that's very important to point out is that Iroko recognizes people prefer their content free. And so the vast majority of our content we actually make available for free. Because we know if people have the choice to get a song or a, a, um, a video either for free or the same thing to pay for, they'll choose the free version. So what we do is we have to make sure that our product is better and still comes at a price point that could either be free or low, that people are comfortable um, in, in consuming it through that platform. And is there enough action taken by African governments? Um, they're trying, they're trying. They're, for instance, Nigeria last month just uh, last month started a collaboration with Google, really trying to, to bring online piracy um, in, a, in an effective way that, that a um, partner like Google could help on. So they try, but ultimately I believe it's up to content producers like Iroko TV to make sure that their product is always better and more easily accessible than that of um, the pirates. TKO, do these international partners, I know South Africa now has an eye to South Africa, do they help in curbing this? <laughs> uh, I, I won't really say yes or no, but um, what we've seen in the previous years is that uh, international uh, companies, they, they, they would come and, and, and do the business, but when it comes to reinvesting it back into the market, we've seen uh, quite a, too little of input from them. Is there engagement that's going on with them in order to bring them on board and in order for them to invest? Uh, good question. Uh, also, um, I'd like to point out that uh, there's, um, there's a sense of uh, lacking behind from the uh, participants from the industry to, to say, well, uh, initiate and innovate and, and form partnerships with these developers and these multinational companies to, to kind of pave a way forward that will be uh, conducive uh, for both investors and, the particip uh, and other participants in the music industry. So if you say in the music industry they're not investing, um, these international companies, are there enough local platforms on the African continent for people to download music legally? There is not enough uh, uh, platforms legally. Uh, there's there's a, a whole lot of reasons for that. Uh, one uh, being access to to to, in, to the internet, um, limited uh, bandwidth as well, and also um, because of poverty, people uh, tend to have um, too little disposable income at the end of the day to say, well, invest in in, in things such as movies and uh, and music. So it becomes like a luxury, which is like at the end of uh, the, the list that would be concerned with at the end of the month. Now, Adi, do you see a lot of traffic, um, especially with the content that's sold on, on your website, Iroko? So we see a lot of traffic, especially growing in Africa. So markets like Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, Tanzania, South Africa, we see a lot of traffic and it's definitely growing. But we also see that it is mainly our Western audiences, say in the US or in the UK, that are happy to pay. Whereas, as I said, a lot of our content is free. That is currently what Africans are gravitating towards. Yet again, once the right payment platform is in place, once you have the right uh, price point, we're seeing growth on our um, premium platform that you pay for as well. Why do you think Africans are not buying content? I think it's two, it's two parts. One is just um, a matter of being used to it, used to paying for content. So we see that a lot in five, ten years ago in Europe and the West, people didn't, people downloaded for free as well. Now there, there are convenient ways to pay through iTunes, etc. And people trust those payment platforms mm -hmm. so they get used to it. Two, we also of course have a different socioeconomic sort of element yeah. here in Africa. Um, so it is, a, it is a process. Okay, I'm going to ask you to hold it there and we are going to continue with the discussion. We have to take a quick break and we will continue with that digital download discussion when we return. on SABC.
We bring you news in your own language. News that affect you. Sports. We have Catherine Drew, SABC News at the High Court in London. Sherwin Bryce's SABC News News. Sarah Kimani, SABC News, Nairobi. We touch and change people's lives. SABC News, Africa's news leader. As the biggest, the most extensive, diverse news organization and the best content provider of choice in Africa, in Africa. we aim to offer the nation breaking news, breaking news, news continuous news. content updates, and current affairs programming throughout, throughout the, day. the day. We are extremely devoted to putting the news in context and providing the nation with the news they want in their own language. We reflect the world to the nation and the nation to itself. This is SABC News. All local, all global, all the time. Exclusive to DSTV. Welcome to another edition of Up Close. My name is Teba Muzegua. I was raped three times before I was 19. How do you overcome all of that? The work that I do is driven primarily by the fact that I'm an activist. Why did you take the appointment? I was the best person for the job. Who is Seth Mazabu? The days of my youth were mostly in prison. What do you do for fun? Cooking. And, and my sisters don't like to cook when I'm there because then they say I criticize everything that they have <laughs> cooked. Mm, adjudicator makes up tail. <laughs> Up close. Weekdays at 2.30 p.m. on SABC News channel. 404. You're watching SABC News. I'm Lorette Morgan and you can join me every weekday between 10 and 12.30 for AM News. I am excited uh, for the first time. I'm not only going to wait for 7 o'clock news <laughs> or 6 o'clock news. For all the latest breaking local and international news, come and unpack the news day with me every weekday at 10. Welcome back. We are still talking digital downloads of African films and music. Continuing the discussion with me is Adinduka Aku, who is in charge of Iroko Partners Business Development for Africa. In Durban, we have TK Ongubane, who is a music producer and founder of mzanzimusic.co.za. Now, you mentioned that um, you make a lot of content available online for free. Now, how do you make your money? So we're not a charity, so that is exactly what I do, making sure that at the end of the month we can monetize, and there are two ways. One is simply advertising. So if we, to our site, we get almost um, across platforms 5.7 million visit, visits every month, so that is a massive audience, a premium audience of African eyeballs that you can monetize through advertising. And then, of course, we also do have a premium channel where people pay the equivalent of about 50 rands per month. And that is for the latest releases, everything in HD and so on. So there are two, two channels through which we can monetize quite well. Are advertisers quick to come? They are quick to come. Africa is growing. Everybody wants wealthy African consumers. So we are a perfect platform to, through which to do that. All right. And TKO, is it easy in South Africa to start a platform where people can download music? Yes, it is easy. But at the same time, tricky because of um, platforms and uh, the legislation of, of, of similar kinds of businesses. I've been researching over the internet to find uh, the framework that actually controls how we are supposed to be doing business. Uh, it's almost not there. It's almost not there. So there's almost no framework. So for you specifically, how are you going about this process? Uh, tricky question. Uh, we've applied to regulating authorities to acquire different licenses because um, there's, that, uh, there's mechanical and performance uh, rights that we need to adhere to. So we're still getting our hands into that, but it's, it's, it's a whole lot of work. All right, Teke Ongubane in Durban, thank you very much for joining us. And Adi Nduka Agu in studio from Iroko Partners, thank you very much for joining us. We have to leave it there. And earlier we told you a bit about a few products that Samsung was launching. Our favorite is something we can wear on the wrist. We keep, our, we keep this space for a gadget or an app there of the week. Um, yeah, I fluffed through that one. We keep this space for a gadget or an app through of the week. So here it is. It's the Samsung Galaxy Gear smartwatch. I want one of these. Experts are calling the Samsung Galaxy Gear a wearable computer. 
This device does most of what your smartphone can do, such as storing music, working as a GPS, receiving calls and taking photographs. It also works in sync with some Samsung smartphones. It gives you a crystal clear 10-inch display and ultimate productivity in a beautiful package. At least one expert likes what he's experienced so far. I think it's um, uh, something is going to open the new category uh, wearable wearable computers. I think uh, they, they did that uh, three years ago with the phablet, uh, first Galaxy Note, and now with the, with the watch. I think it's going to be huge. And the public is generally impressed. The watch is very impressive. It is elegant, smart, small, and above all, it can do everything. One could expect it was only good for sports or fitness or for just a small camera, but it can do anything. It is surprisingly elegant, but it all depends on the price. One has to see what it costs. The Samsung Gear phone comes in different colors. All right, so let's take a look at some of what's been going on in blogs and social media now. You can also share what you've been up to in digital platforms by tweeting us. We are on SABC Network. On Twitter, Kenya President Uhuru Kenyatta has shared this photo of him laying the foundation of a church in the country's capital, Nairobi. South Africa's national football team, Bafana Bafana, beat Botswana 4-1 in a World Cup qualifier yesterday. But they failed to go through as 